As with most of my other tutorials, we're going to use AdventureWorks 2019, which is great for you because that means you can grab it online for free, install it, and follow step by step what I'm going to show you here. Now, you've, we're going to use the sales order, the sales order detail table, which is just down here. Um, so I'll show you what's in there. We've got about 121,000 rows in there. And the, we're going to use this column because if you look at this column, we've got the years that are in here. We've got rows from 2011 right the way up, what, 12, 13, right the way up to 2014. Now, on larger tables, that might span over 20 years, um, but we're going to partition it by year in this column. For other tables, you might want to partition it by sales order person. If you're the sort of company that's looking at sales from one person and you want to compare it to others, but for this exercise, we're going to use this column here. Now, to start off with, I'm going to add four file groups. Um, a file group is, if we look up here, we can go to properties. And if you look at the files here, you can see its logical file name, which file group it belongs to. There won't be any file groups in here at the minute, but file group is basically a container for certain rows really um so i'm gonna add four file groups then i'm gonna go down and i'm gonna add four files ndf files these will be for each of these file groups here so i can just run that and that'll complete now if i grab this here you can see this is adventureworks 2019 that's your ndf and your ldf file and these are my four ndf these are my new file groups i've just created I shrink that down and I can go back here, look at the properties of Eventworks, I can look at the files, it contains rows, these are the names, sales order detail to signify the table and the year that it's going to contain. Um, and you can see these are the file names here. Um, then this will also show up under file groups under here. And that's where you can see that we've created it. Then what I'm going to do after that, because we're partitioning it, I need to create a partition function and a partition scheme. Now this bit here is my partition function. So if you look at the column we're doing it under, what I do is I look down here, go to sales order detail, look at the type that column is, say anything to the left of this value here, so anything up to the end of 2011 is going to go in the first file. Anything from 2011 to 2012 is going to go here. Anything to the left of this and above this will go down here and so on. So I'm going to create my partition function, then down here I'm going to create my partition scheme. Now to just clear this up, a partition function is what maps the rows of the table or an index into partitions. The scheme maps the partitions of the table into the file groups. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say, well, this is my function I'm using, so I'm using this logic, and anything from here will go into this file group, anything from 2012 here will go in here, and so on. Now, anything else is just gonna go in primary. Anything else that hasn't fitted into this logic will go in here. So anything from 2015, for example, would go in the primary file group. So let's run that. That's completed nicely. And then what I'm gonna do is, as I said, I'm gonna create, um, I'm gonna show how to, how to partition swap. So I'm gonna create an exact replica. I'm gonna create a staging schema. And I'm gonna create a replica of this. So to do that, I just went to script two and I created that. Um, so execute that, and we'll see that down there. And we can see the staging table. Now we need to move on to actually partitioning the table and how to do that. But before I start, I've got this script here. This is each table. This is the schema. This is the name of the table, and this is the file group it's in and how many rows it contains. So we can see at the minute all the file groups primary at the minute. The table hasn't been partitioned. Everything's in its original file group. So if I scroll down, I find this table. Here it is. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to storage, then create partition. 
move that across there. And as we said, select the column you're going to partition by. And I want to align all my index with that partition as well. I'm going to next. I don't need to create a fun partition function because I've created one earlier with the logic I want to use. Exactly the same for my partition scheme. And then we've got a nice little Microsoft bug here where I have to go back and forward in Management Studio to select the file group there. It's going to go anything left of there. And so on. And then anything else is just going to go in primary. Let's take a look at that a second. Anything left of the end of 2011 is going to go in the 2011 file group. So there's, you've got to think about your logic here. So if, if someone puts in 2010, it's still going to go in here. If someone puts in 2008, it's still going to go in the 2011 one until you've amended this later on. And likewise, anything from 2015 will go in here. So as the years increase, you might need to, you probably would need to change this to allow for that. But that's tomorrow's problem. So go across here. I'm going to run this immediately. And we'll finish. Nice and quick, doesn't take too long. I'm going to run this now, and this should be partitioned so we can see primary file group. And as I get down to the sales order table, so we can see it split out what was once in there into separate file groups. So these, because it's, these are the indexes, so some will be clustered, some won't be. And what I'll do is I'll partition this table as well. I'll pause the video exactly the same as it was two minutes ago. So you'd have to see this. I'll just pause it for you. Here we are. I'm clicking next and I'm going to run that. Let's remove this and we can see that that will also be in here. Down the bottom, maybe. Oh no, be sales order detail. So you can see the stage in schema here as well with no rows in it. So if you look at partition, let's do partition two. We've got two, one, six, eight, nine rows in the sales schema. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that to the stage in schema. So I'm going to switch that out. So if I, if I look at this, what I've got to do is because I'm partitioning by this date here, my cluster key or my primary key needs to contain this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate those indexes. And if you notice how I'm recreating them, specifying which partition scheme to, to, to recreate them on. So I'll run that. And then I'm going to switch. This is my partition switch, and this is what I think is really neat. So again, if we look here, sales schema, 21689 rows. I'm going to run that and say, alter this table, switch partition two to the staging table. So we're just going to repoint it. If I run this again, we can see the sales schema has now got none. It's got zero rows in there. And the staging schema has got 21689. So if I wanted, this is the cool bit, you see, now I can go here. If I did, if I go up here, it's only got two, 2012 rows in there because I've switched that partition. I've switched it to another table, it's only got 2012 rows in there. If I did the same to source table you'll have everything in there apart from 2012 just scroll down do so you notice the numbers already dropped see 2011 to 2013 down to 14 so i think it's really neat so what i'll do is i'll switch that back um actually i'll switch partition let's do partition four three Likewise, again, see so down here, 99,628. That will drop considerably. 
dropped by over half. So you've got 2011, and then just 2014, and likewise up here, I've got 2012 and 2013. Now, the other thing I really wanted to show was the truncating tables by partitions. So if I look in, in here, I can see that it's got 5,716 rows in partition one. Now what I can do, I can truncate a table by, let's use the staging one actually. Let's go 21689 in partition two under the staging schema. So I can partition, I can truncate just that partition. So that'd be partition two. And then I can run this again. And it's completely empty. So if you take a look at this one, partition one, partition three, I can get rid of just what's in partition one, leaving this down here. So if I just change that to a one, run this again. In the staging, well, sorry, I did it in the staging schema. So I did it in the sales schema. That's completely empty as well, but it's still got rows in here. Still got rows in there, but only for 2013 and probably 14. Now what's great here, if you think, if you've got any archiving or purging routines, if, if you've got a huge table here and you, you can just truncate part of it, or you can switch out part of it into a separate table and archive that off, or you can, if you've got a lot of reporting and you know some of it isn't needed, you can switch some of that out and just access the part you need. It's, it's, it's great for performance. It's great for administration. The only thing I'll say is the limitations of this. I dropped the constraints at the beginning on that table for the purpose of the tutorial, just because the staging tables isn't gonna have any constraints to check order quantities and stuff in replica tables. So I just got rid of them just for the purpose of the tutorial. But any questions, let me know below. Cheers.